Hello, everyone. Welcome to Sunday Worship. Uh, St. Barnabites and anybody else who's visiting, uh, we're glad to be with you this morning. I hope this finds you in a good place. Um, I, you're going to hear in a few minutes uh, some readings um, done by our own Debbie Gordon. I thank her uh, for that. You will enjoy those. Um, so pick up your prayer book and let us begin. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Grant to us, Lord, we pray, the Spirit to think and do always those things that are right, that we who cannot exist without you may by you be enabled to live according to your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We will now have our readings. A reading from the book of Genesis. Jacob settled in the land where his father had lived as an alien, the land of Canaan. This is the story of the family of jo Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was shepherding the flock with his brothers. He was a helper to the sons of Bilhah and Zilpah, his father's wives. And Joseph brought a bad report of them to their father. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any of his other children because he was the son of his old age and he had made him a long robe with sleeves. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. Now his brothers went to pasture their father's flock near Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, Are not your brothers pasturing the flock at Shechem? Come, I will send you to them, he answered. Here I am. So he said to him, go now, see if it is well with your brothers and with the flock and bring word back to me. So he sent him from the valley of Hebron. He came to Shechem and a man found him wandering in the fields. The man asked him, what are you seeking? I am seeking my brothers, he said. Tell me, please where they are pasturing the flock. The man said, they have gone away, for I heard them say, let us go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them at Dothan. They saw him from a distance, and before he came near to them, they conspired to kill him. They said to one another, here comes this dreamer, come now, let us kill him and throw him into one of the pits. Then we shall say that a wild animal devoured him and we shall see what will become of his dreams. But when Reuben heard it, he delivered him out of their hands saying, let us not take his life. Reuben said to them, shed no blood, throw him into this pit here in the wilderness, but lay no hand on him. 
that he might be rescued out of their hand and restore him to his father. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the long robe with sleeves that he wore, and they took him and threw him into a pit. The pit was empty. There was no water in it. Then they sat down to eat, and looking up, they saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead with their camels carrying gum, balm, and resin on their way to carry it down to Egypt. Then Judah said to his brothers, What profit is it if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and not lay our hands on him, for he is our brother our own flesh. And his brothers agreed. With some Midianite traders passed by, they drew Joseph up, lifting him out of the pit, and sold him to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver. And they took Joseph to e Egypt. The word of the Lord. A portion of Psalm 105. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, and speak of all his marvelous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord and his strength. Continually seek his face. Remember the marvels he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O offspring of Abraham, his servant, O children of Jacob, his chosen. Then he called for a famine in the land and destroyed the supply of bread. He sent a man before them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. They bruised his feet in fetters his neck they put in an iron collar. Until his prediction came to pass, the word of the Lord tested him. The king sent and released him. The ruler of the peoples set him free. He, is, he set him as a master over his household, as a ruler over all his possessions, to instruct his princes according to his will and to teach his elders wisdom. Hallelujah. A reading from Romans. Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law, that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the abyss, that is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, on your lips, and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one who believes with the heart is so is justified and one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? How are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? 
and how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat battered by the waves was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, it is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and beginning to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, you of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshiped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, good morning. Um, welcome to another Sunday, if you're joining us for just this service. Um, but the lectionary gods, when I read this, seem to be um, smiling upon us, or upon me, because it's a water story, and I love water. I'm actually going to engulf you in multiple water stories this morning. You might be wet by the time this is over. Um, because one of the ways to describe my life and the life of my family could be as a series of encounters with various bodies of water. If you ask me to describe the most pleasurable times in my life, I'm probably going to tell you about time spent on or under or near water. This water time spent swimming, surfing, paddling, diving has been interspersed with periods spent thinking about water and where and when and how to reach it next. Case in point, during this COVID time, um, my family has left the Berg two times. And where did we go each time? To the water to the beach to be exact. Okay, having waxed on about the greatness of water, I wanna pivot, I wanna change gears. I have been talking about water as if it was the most marvelous and desirable of elements. But five years ago, my boys and I uh, were enjoying some ocean time together. The waves were fun, they were big, we were in our element, it was awesome. But in an instant, our joy would turn into a real life horror movie. <laughs> As my son Graham um, was bitten by a shark. In the water we so love, it turned into a place of fear and death, of the fear of death. 
anyway, as we hurried to get him ashore. And as a parent, it was the, it was the scariest moment um, imaginable. I tell this story because my view of water was really not completely rooted in reality. Of course, water and what's in it is dangerous. Water has many qualities and aspects. And actually, through most of recorded history, water has been seen as nothing but dangerous. It's only recently that that's changed. For instance, 2,000 or so years ago, in Hebraic thought, water was much more than a physical reality. Yes, water was precious for life, but water was primarily seen as a threat. In the scripture, scriptures, whether it's the sea's unfathomable depths, whether it's a relentless river in full flood or an all-consuming deluge, water is seen as putting human life in peril. And even more than that, water is representative of that which oppresses and opposes the salvation intended for the people of Israel. In our world, water equals life. Water equals fun. But to the Israelites, water was a profound symbol, not of life. No, water was a potent symbol of death itself. That's right. In Jesus' day, water equaled death. But here's where God comes in. In the creation of the world, in the covenant with Noah, or in the mighty act of deliverance from Pharaoh's army at the Red Sea, God's sovereign and transcendent power is continuously being demonstrated by God's ability to overcome the inherent danger of water. And guess what? The iconic water story in today's gospel, it follows the same pattern to his tea. So, so today we hear this story about Jesus walking on the waves. You could also hear that as Jesus walks on death. That's what he's walking on. And that's what they think because they're so afraid. That's why they're so afraid. Here he is walking not on something that's, that's um, not scary, but something that is very scary. Um, but doesn't it change it a little bit to hear that said, Jesus walks on death? Of course, the story also involves Peter. So inspired is he that he tries to do the same, that he, he thinks he can step out on death. But when Peter steps out of the boat and begins walking towards Jesus, not unlike a toddler taking their first steps, Peter moves forward as if focusing on the waiting arms of a parent. But when he realizes what he's actually doing, walking on death, he panics and the rock begins to sink like a stone, only to have Jesus save his petrified friend. Now, if we haven't talked about enough water stories yet, I got one more for you that I kind of want to use to wrap this whole um, water deal up. Um, I'm reminded of a, of a more recent story. This, this story is from uh, the winter of 1984. Um, a flight took off that day from Washington's National Airport. It was a, a freezing um, sub-zero day. But the plane would clip a bridge and would plunge into then, the then icy and deep Potomac River. And this harrowing uh, rescue that ensued was caught by someone's camera, a bystander. And for at least a few days, America was enthralled by a real life hero who was a passenger on that plane. The man himself was in his 50s and is really his only distinguishing characteristic that you could see in the film was his bald head and his mustache. In the clips, the man in the water 
as he was first called, is first seen clinging to the tail section of the airplane amid other panicked passengers who only had so long to escape the frigid waters. The photos chronicle the rescue teams as they frantically raced against time. And the pictures tell a very heroic story for each time the helicopter lowered a lifeline to our man in the water, he can be seen passing it to another of the passengers. In the last frames, the helicopter is seen coming back a final time, but no more heads were visible bobbing in the water. The rescue window had closed and the man was not to be seen. He had gone under. By all accounts, this man had much to live for, which makes his final actions the more stunning. I see Jesus as that man in the water. I see Jesus as that man in the water, the one who again and again and again, who amid all that death, hands over the lifeline to another. Every time, every time the lifeline is lowered to him, he places the flotation ring on a fellow passenger rather than saving himself. The same Jesus who would walk on water, who could walk on death itself, for our sake, he chooses to eternally immerse himself in the deep with us. He's doing it right now with the COVID. He's doing it every moment of our life. Jesus is the man in the water for all time. Jesus is the man in the water. Amen. Standing next to St. Barnabas here, we affirm our faith, saying the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him, all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor 
and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we wrap all of our prayers, all of our hopes, all of our fears, we wrap them in the multitude of your mercy, and we trust in your goodness. Through Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us now confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Um, as I do this dismissal today, as I send you out into the world to be the people of God, I bring um, this light into perspective. There's so many beautiful rays of light, shards of light that, that light this place up, and and my wish for you is this beautiful light, this light that shines and illuminates uh, this beautiful place. May it illuminate you and your family and your life. Um, and Lord, um, help us to be kind. Help us uh, to be kind to ourselves, to each other, um, to everyone. For all of us are involved in our own great struggles. And may the blessing of God the Father God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and always. Amen.